Welcome to Life Plus. This is George G, and the time is right. Welcome to today's guest, strong and powerful, Dr. William Davis. Dr. Davis, are you ready to do this? Anytime, George. All right, let's go. Dr. Davis is a leading medical expert and cardiolog- cardiologist. He is the author of the New York Times bestselling Wheat Belly series. His upcoming book is Super Gut Reprogram Your Microbiome to Restore Health, Lose Weight, and Turn Back the Clock. Dr. Davis, tell us a little bit about your personal life, some more about your work, and why you do what you do. George, it sounds awfully cynical, but the healthcare system is broken. Mm. It does not do what it's supposed to be doing, which is provide health. Instead, it is a machine for generating revenue for healthcare insiders by dispensing pharmaceuticals and procedures. And lost in that conversation is real health. So doctors should be experts in nutrition and health and the microbiome and then resort to drugs and procedures. That's not how it works. It's it's the opposite. It's the other way around. And that's sad because we have reached a time in human history, George, where the tools and the information that allow people to empower themselves in health is tremendous, but it's not coming from the doctor. So I feel it's my job, it's my mission to help people understand many of the uh, things you can do to take back control over health. Well, amen to that. So I guess it doesn't really matter the why, why that's all happening, because it is. So why don't we focus our time on helping people to, to sort of better understand everything? What's, what, what's the best jumping off point? Where's, where's, where's the best entry point here? Well, I can tell you how I got here with the super gut. I'm a cardiologist. What the hell am I doing with the microbiome? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, my wheat belly program that originated with efforts to put a stop to coronary disease, doing heart scans and doing coronary calcium scores. The conventional answer, George, if you have a heart scan score, coronary calcium score, it's a way of scoring or measuring coronary disease, a serious disease, right? People Mm -hmm. die of sudden cardiac death, heart attack. And by the way, I undertook these projects uh, while I was doing angioplasty, stent implantation, all those kinds of procedures. And then my mom died of sudden cardiac death after Mm -hmm. her two vessel coronary angioplasty. So it illustrated to me what a flawed way to manage a disease in a cath lab, in a procedure lab. That's when I set up a heart scan center. We were scanning people, but it also became clear that the conventional answers. So if you, if heaven forbid, you went through and you had a heart scan score, say 500, which is very abnormal, normal is zero, no plaque at all in your coronary arteries. Well, the conventional answer is a low fat diet, exercise, baby aspirin, a high dose statin cholesterol drug, maybe some other things. Well, we help publish the data. It doesn't work at all. If you did nothing, the score increases 25% per year. If you take what my colleagues to this day, George, call optimal medical therapy, Mm -hmm. your score goes up 25% per year, (laughs) zero impact. And with each leap in score, you're close and close to dying, heart attack, need for procedures. So I look for better solutions. One of the things you hear, if you really want to get control over risk for heart disease, you reject this idiocy called cholesterol. Cholesterol should have been rejected 40 years ago as outdated, useless method, but it makes a ton of money. Mm. But if you reject that, look for the real causes for coronary disease, you find them, inflammation, insulin resistance, and small LDL particles. And so that's what I I, I did. Now, the science is clear. What, What in the diet allows formation of small LDL particles, not LDL cholesterol, the actual lipoprotein particles themselves. What caused it? Wheat, grains, and sugars. So that's what that's what led to the whole wheat belly thing. Because when I took wheat and grains out of people's diets, I saw their lives transformed. Type 2 diabetes became non-diabetic. People lost 73 pounds. People's skin rashes went away. Depression lifted. <laughs> they, they could control their appetites. So that led to the wheat belly experience. So That, and I I coupled it with some nutrients that are largely lacking in modern life, not from a diet, but just from modern life, like magnesium. We drink filtered water. Water filtration removes all magnesium. Vitamin D, because nice guy like you likes to wear clothes in public and (laughs) works indoors so we don't get sun exposure. So replace the handful of nutrients lacking in modern life. That Those two things, the diet, wheat grain elimination, with uh, nutrients that are lacking in modern life, that alone, huge benefits. But people said things like, but you know what? I'm still intolerant. 
to a bunch of foods. I can't eat legumes. I can't eat fruit. I can't eat FODMAPs. I can't eat uh, histamine-containing foods. Uh, or they had some residual problem. Maybe they lost 73 pounds, but need to lose another 45, but we're stuck at a plateau. Hmm. Or a type 2 diabetic uh, with a hemoglobin A1C, long-term measure of blood sugar, uh, maybe 12.7, a disastrous 12.7 gets off the insulin, gets off the medications, reduces hemoglobin A1C down to say 5.9%, much better, but not perfect. Perfect would be 5.0. That's where all the excess risk, which is considerable, even at 5.9, goes away at 5.0. So people were showing me these residual problems. So I wonder where the heck is coming from? Well, I looked in the microbiome. Lo and behold, George, all of, I would say nearly all the residual problems came from disrupted microbiomes. And it's become clear that modern people have massively disrupted their uh, intestinal microbiomes. Disrupted means I, I, I broke it. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So it means we've lost numerous species, species that did important things for us. And when you lose those important species, you allow unhealthy species to proliferate and they do something even worse. They start to also ascend. And these are largely stool microbes like E. coli and Klebsiella and Pseudomonas. They ascend into the ileum, jejunum, duodenum and stomach. So rather than just having microbes in the four or five feet of colon, many people have 30 feet of bacteria, the 24 feet of small bowel, and that process is called small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And George, I was guilty of thinking this is an uncommon problem. Mm -hmm. But it's clear, if you do the math and all the studies, it's likely affects over 100 million people. And, you know, even then, I kind of refused to believe it until this device came out. The AIR device, A-I-R-E. It's a consumer device. You blow into it, talks to your smartphone. It's essentially a device to map out where in the GI tract microbes are, li are living. Well, I got a hold of this. And by the way, the inventor, Dr. Angus Short, a PhD engineer in Dublin, Ireland, invented it for his fiance, then now, now wife, because she had irritable bowel syndrome and was told to go on a low FODMAPs diet, a low fiber, low sugar diet, because that's been shown in people with IBS to reduce bloating and diarrhea and abdominal discomfort. So she's doing it, but he saw how difficult it was for her and what happened when she slipped up with gas and bloating. So he invents this device to measure hydrogen gas that's produced when someone with IBS is exposed to those fibers or sugars. Well, I got a hold of it and I called him up. I say, hey, Angus, that's not what this is. This is a mapping device to show you where microbes are living. Now he's in the process of changing all his instructions and literature. He's got regulatory issues, so it can't happen overnight. Uh, so anybody who wants to get this device to detect SIBO uh, it's $200, by the way, but you can use it over and over and over. You can share it with people who are close to you. Don't share it with your neighbors. Like you wouldn't share your toothbrush, right? Sure. <laughs> so, but it shows you where microbes are living. But if you want to know how to use this, it's in my super, there's seven pages of conversation in my super guide book on how to use it. Angus is changing his instructions, but he hasn't done that yet. And a new device came out, by the way, it's black. It's my black one's in the kitchen and it measures hydrogen gas and methane. So it added methane for another form of this SIBO overgrowth process. But George, the SIBO process is everywhere. But the key here is to recognize that SIBO, 30 feet, trillions of microbes, you know, they only live for hours to days. They don't live for decades. So there's trillions of microbes turning over rapidly in 30 feet of the GI tract. Well, when they die, their breakdown products can enter the bloodstream. This has been suspected for many years, but it was finally validated in 2007 by a Danish group, now corroborated numerous times. This is called endotoxemia, the entry of breakdown bacterial products into the bloodstream. But it now tells us how the microbiome, a disrupted microbiome, can be experienced as the joint and muscle pain of fibromyalgia or rheumatoid arthritis or in the brain as depression or Parkinson's disease, or Alzheimer's dementia, or in the skin as rosacea or psoriasis, or as a metabolic disease like obesity, type two diabetes, and fatty liver. In other words, George, we've got to reconsider all diseases now in light of this finding, because if all you do is, for instance, take, a, take prednisone, 
for your skin rash, you didn't address the cause. Mm -hmm. If you take a blocker of inflammation for your fibromyalgia, you didn't address the cause. That is the disrupted trillions of microbes living in the GI tract. Is it possible to, to bring back the, the good stuff that, that, that I wiped out? It is. And that's the fun part. Uh, you know, it, it is important to address this SIBO and other disruptions first, because you don't want to throw your good guys into a snake pit. Hmm. <laughs> but restoring these, the good guys is a lot of fun, George. So the one that people really get excited about is Lactobacillus reuteri, mm. R-E-U-T-E-R-I named after the German microbiologist who discovered it in 1962 from breast milk. And back then, he, it was easy to find. In the 40 years of his subsequent career, he found it increasingly difficult to find. Well, you know, all indigenous populations have rotary. You know, people unexposed to antibiotics and chlorinated drinking water and prescription drugs, they all have rotary. The, the, the chipmunk outside, chickens, raccoons, they all have rotary. We've lost it. Almost all of us have lost rotary. So we restore it. And when you restore it, George, incredible things happen. So we restore it. It takes up residence in the entire GI tract, by the way, sends a signal via the vagus nerve to your brain to release oxytocin, the hormone of love and empathy. So people say, wow, I, I like my spouse better. I like my family better. I like my coworkers better. They're less annoying. My favorite. I understand other people's points of view better. <clears throat> the ladies go nuts for it because it caused an explosion in dermal collagen and they get smoother skin with fewer wrinkles. Guys like it because you get a restoration of youthful muscle and strength. There's an increase in libido and an increase in the erotic content of dreams. Much better. I'm a chronic insomniac. I've struggled for years and years taking melatonin, mega doses, tryptophan, whatever I need, had to do to sleep. Now I don't take anything. I got this rotor. I, I sleep nine hours straight through uninterrupted, vivid, colorful dreams. It suppresses appetite. So you're in complete control over appetite and impulse. Um, it preserves bone density in ladies. So people are smoother skin, youthful muscle and strength preservation of bone density, better sleep. George, we've we're turned the clock back, I think, 10, 20 years. That's one microbe. Mm -hmm. There's many others. And so do I need to go and, 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 and capture chipmunks to get it out of them, doctor? <laughs> or how do, I, how do I access the rotary? So thankfully, you can buy it. You okay. can buy it as a probiotic, single species, single strain. Now, uh, I originally got it from Sweden. There's a company called BioGaia, B-I-O-G-A-I-A, -A, and the product is called Gastrus, G-A-S-T-R-U-S. Now, that's a product made for infants. So the quantity of bacteria is relatively trivial for adults. And so this is some years back. I thought, I'm going to make yogurt out of it to amplify the bacterial count. It's not really yogurt. If the FDA were listening, they'd say, don't call it yogurt because yogurt is only made with lactobacillus bulgaricus and streptococcus thermophilus. And the commercial yogurt makers will ferment it, that's how you make yogurt, for four hours. Well, Rotary doubles every three hours. You know, there's no sexual reproduction among microbes, they just double. <coughs> Pardon me, so if Rotary doubles every three hours and you're going to ferment it in your factory for four hours, you got nothing. One bacteria becomes two, that's it. Mm. So we ferment for 36 hours, 12 doublings, I performed flow cytometry to count the number of microbes on the yogurt. We're getting around 250 billion bacteria per half cup serving. So by doing this, this extended wow. fermentation, making yogurt, we get a thousand fold increase in number of microbes. Then we consume a half cup a day. And that's when all these wonderful effects, deep sleep, smoother skin, restoration, youthful muscle, all that stuff happens. So that's from the gastrous tablets. But since then, when we, when we play with microbes, whether it's rotary or lactobacillus gastrii or bacillus coagulans, we have to be mindful to some degree of the strain of bacteria, not just the species, but the strain. So to illustrate, so I've got E. coli in my gut, you've got, e your listeners have E. coli, but what if you ate lettuce contaminated by cow manure and E. coli? You can die of that E. coli. Mm -hmm. So same species, E. coli, different strain. 
So strain specificity can even make a life death difference. Now, in this case, I'm not sure <clears throat> if it's important to get those strains. If you want to really get the strains we know work, I've used gastric strains, but I have since made yogurt with seven other strains. And so far, all the effects seem to apply to every other strain. I have a small mouse trial ready to go. And we're going to do a series of them to compare. Is there one strain of right, right better than the others? I think there is, by the way, but, <laughs> but we're going to prove it. So that's going to, I won't have those results probably till end of summer, something like that. Uh, but we want to optimize this effect because it's so important. Now, George, that's one microbe. There's a whole bunch of other microbes. And people said, oh, my God, this is so overwhelming with all this microbe. So I tell them, well, you know, like when you go to a restaurant and the waitress hand, hand you a menu, you don't freak out, right, and say, I can't order all these appetizers and main courses <laughs> and desserts. You, you pick and choose the dishes. You, same thing here. If you want smoother skin, deeper sleep, increased libido, muscle and strength, Let's make yogurt with lactobacillus roadride. And by the way, it doesn't have to be yogurt nor dairy. It just happens to be easiest with dairy. Let's say you want um, a smaller waist, let less visceral fat over that achieved with diet and other means. Let's ferment lactobacillus gasseri. Let's say you want to reduce arthritis pain in your knee. Let's make yogurt with bacillus coagulans. Let's say you have a, a baby and you want that baby to be healthier and have uh, more likely to sleep through the night, less colic, longer naps, fewer bowel movements, half as many diaper changes from mom and dad. And as an older child, less asthma, less irritable bowel syndrome, uh, less likely to become obese and have a higher IQ, let's ferment bifidobacteria infantis. So George, you can accomplish all sorts of things once you know which microbe to use and how to, how to increase the numbers to very high counts. Amazing. So since you've been sleeping more, have you been coming up with less ideas because you're not awake for, for, for quite as long, doctor? Well, I tell you, George, it's fun as heck to play. And these are a lot of the, these effects, by the way, have not been reported in the scientific literature. We're learning new things. You know, I love to, uh, I, I like people like you, citizen scientists, people learning new things. And one of the things we're learning very quickly are the effects on sleep and the internal dialogue you have with yourself. You know, it's, it's shocking to what degree microbes determine whether the internal dialogue you have is one of love and empathy and optimism or hate and criticism. So this is largely determined by the microbes and their metabolites. And it's shock and you'll see this play out when you start to play with the microbes, good and bad. But I, so I did make yogurt with the rotor ice, sleeping nine hours, wow. I combined it with yogurt made with lactobacillus casei, the Sharota strain. So it's a commercial product called Yakult. It's a little wacky, low-fat, sugary drink, crappy thing. But we use it for a microbial source. And that, that microbe has been, well, has been well studied, and this has never been reported. I added it. I started sleeping 12 hours a day. Wow. Going to bed 9 p.m., which is really early. Waking up at 9 a.m. And George, waking up thinking... I might sleep another couple hours <laughs> as a chronic insomniac sleeping 12 plus hours. I had to stop it. Actually, there's another strain that many of us are playing with called lactobacillus fermentum, the ME3 strain that like likewise seems to have a very profound sleep effect. So these new lessons, George, are coming out at breakneck speed. We're learning new lessons. We're also creating new lessons too with our clinical trials. Amazing. And when somebody gets a copy of super gut, are they going to be able to read about all this? Yeah, so I tell you, I, I essentially did what I suggest with the menu. If you want this specific effect, get this microbe. Here's where you get it. Here's how you ferment it. You know, microbes are like animals. You, know, you, you can't raise a lion under the same circumstances as a walrus, <laughs> right? So there's specific needs they have. So we, we have to attend to those needs. It's, it's really quite simple, though, George. It's not all that complicated. But you can make yogurt or other fermented foods, fermented coconut milk, uh, fermented juices, fermented um, salsas, uh, hummus, all kinds of things you can, vegetables, and you can pick and choose the microbes you want for the effects you want. Amazing. Well, Dr. Davis, you've given us a lot, but the people are ready for that difference-making tip. What do you have for them? 
Well, it's become clear, especially from the work of Erica and Justin Sonnenberg. It's a husband-wife couple at Stanford. They publish a lot of evidence in the microbiome. They published a very important study about six months ago that showed that fermented foods, the consumption of fermented foods, that is from vegetables you ferment on your kitchen counter, kimchi, kefir, kombuchas, yogurts, fermented meats, probably the most important thing you can do to restore a healthy microbiome. What's odd about that is when you, let's say I eat some kimchi, I'm gonna get a wallop of microbes like leuconostoc mesenteroides or Pediococcus pentasaceus. But those micro, very beneficial microbes, by the way, George, but they don't actually take up long-term residence. They somehow open the door to all kinds of good microbes. And it's not quite clear exactly how they accomplish this. Is it because they were latent? Are your, is your microbiome more receptive? To, who knows? Nobody knows yet. But it's, it's clear that this habit that most modern people have forgotten about because home refrigeration became a thing in 1927, 1928, we all forgot to eat fermented foods mm -hmm. like our great grandmothers did. That is very, very important. Well, I think that that is great stuff that definitely gets, come on. Dr. Davis, thank you so much for coming on. Where can people learn more about you? Where can they get a copy of Super Gut, Reprogram Your Microbiome to Restore Health, Lose Weight, and Turn Back the Clock? Well, Super Gut books available just about anywhere, Barnes & Noble, Books A Million, Amazon, et cetera. Uh, I consolidated, consolidated my websites, George, recently because I had too many for too many books, too many projects. So it's all now under drdavisinfinitehealth.com. There's a blog. There's a membership website where we, every... Typically Wednesday night, I meet with about 70 to 100 people, two-way Zoom, and we talk about rotary and gasserai and yogurts and all kinds of other issues in health. Love it. I was going to ask, uh, and I just about forgot, how, how often should we get a heart scan? Well, so that's a whole conversation of its own. But, uh, so guys, maybe at age 40, ladies age 50 are the usual cutoffs. Depends on the score, George. So if your score is, let's say, zero, which is great. I wouldn't repeat it for a minimum of five years because mm -hmm. your likelihood of converting to positive is relatively low. But if your score is 38, well, okay, that's, that's not a terrible score. You're not in danger, but you want to get a hold of it. So I'd get, get another scan, maybe a year or three years. What if your score is 1400? You're in deep doo-doo, right? You better act fast. And I get that score again in about a year after you've uh, folded in your program. That is Diet designed to eradicate small LDL particles, fish oil at a therapeutic dose, which is for us 3,000 to 3,600 milligrams of EPA and DHA per day, vitamin D, an uh, oil-based gel cap sufficient to raise your 25-hydroxy vitamin D to 60 to 70 nanograms, iodine, and get your thyroid optimized because hypothyroidism is rampant and it's a flagrant cardio cardiovascular risk factor, and magnesium because we drink filtered water. We try to get about 500 milligrams per That alone, big but then you got to address the microbiome because it's becoming clearer and clearer that who would have thought that the microbiome plays a role in heart disease and all in congestive heart failure, coronary disease, carotid disease, atrial fibrillation. So it's a whole new world, George. We have to reconsider all the things we thought we knew about heart disease and other conditions. Thank you, sir. Thank you again. If you enjoyed this much as I did, show Dr. Davis your appreciation and share today's show with a friend who also appreciates good ideas, go to drdavis, Dr. Davis, infinitehealth.com. So drdavisinfinitehealth.com. Check out all the great resources. Um, learn from him. Pick up a copy of Super Gut. Reprogram your microbiome to restore health, lose weight, and turn back the clock wherever you buy your books. Thank you again, Dr. Davis. Thank you, George. And once again, apologies for last week's debacle. <laughs> Not at all. And until next time, keep fighting the good fight. We are all in this together.